Let's try something real quick. Close your eyes and picture the first car that comes to mind when I say the word hybrid. That's the car you pictured, right? The Toyota Prius has become so synonymous with the word hybrid that it needs no real introduction. One look at that car and you know exactly what to expect. How does it look? Toyota tried to be a bit more bold with the fourth generation Prius's design, but I'm not really sure if it works. To my eyes, the last two generations of the hybrid hatch were much cleaner, more handsome packages. This one has all sorts of weird angles and creases worked into its aerodynamic shape, and it's particularly offensive when viewed from the rear. What the heck were they thinking with those taillights? Thankfully, this Prius 4 tester rides on 17-inch wheels that better fill out the wells. The base wheels of lesser models look downright cheap. How's the storage? The Prius is a hatchback, which actually makes it really functional. The liftgate opens pretty tall. It's got a wide, low load floor, plenty of room, and the seats fold flat, though when they are folded flat, there's about a four inch gap between the actual cargo floor and the back of the seats, so you might have to kind of finagle things when you're putting them in there. There's nothing revolutionary in terms of clever cubbies or innovative storage solutions. The door pockets are pretty small, and the center console has enough room for a phone and maybe a small purse. The cup holders are ample, and there's a clear place to put your phone with wireless charging built in. But it's still kind of weird that there's only one USB port in here, and the glove compartment itself only offers limited amounts of storage. Is it roomy? If you're up front, headroom is beyond spacious. That weird shape allows for some peace of mind in that regard. You'll kind of feel like you're on top of the seats, not in them, but no one really expects or wants deep supportive buckets in a Prius. I'd like a bit more reach with the steering wheel in terms of telescopic function, but it's still not hard to find a comfortable driving position. Around back, headroom is a little less ideal. I'm only five foot seven, so I don't have that much of a hard time fitting back there, but I don't really think six foot five Seth Mirzma would be all too comfortable in the back of the Prius. How does the interior feel? So the interior of the Prius is not gonna blow you away. The seats are a little flat and not super comfortable, but they're trimmed in nice leather, as is the steering wheel. There's, you know, soft touch material all throughout the cabin. And the visibility is generally good. The center mounted gauge cluster is a little like 2006 Toyota Yaris for my taste, but it's got everything you need front and center and it's very easy to read. I don't love the white plastic trim that's on this center console and, and up here by the sort of weird shifter, but it's got two nice size cup holders and it's got a wireless charging dock for your phone. Pretty cool. Um, all in, the interior is very just simple and easy to use and I like that everything is logical. There's actually a dial for the volume. There's a knob to adjust fan speed on the HVAC. It's very simple, it's very easy, but it won't blow you away. Is it well equipped? This loaded Prius 4 model comes with everything. LED headlights, Bluetooth, navigation, heated seats, lane departure warning, automatic climate control, and more. Of course, this is also kind of an expensive example of the Prius at over $33,000, but you could certainly live without a lot of these niceties and not break the bank with a mid-grade model. How's the infotainment system? The Prius has Toyota's Entune system, which is pretty much standard across all the Toyota Lexus models. It's not really great in terms of like world beating tech or tons of features, but it's got a lot of apps built in like OpenTable, iHeartRadio, MovieTickets.com, and it's relatively easy to use with a responsive touch screen, clearly laid out controls, and a pretty nice design. Is it a good daily driver? So daily driver duty is pretty much what the Prius is made for. 
It's meant to be driven in the city, on the highway, commuting, and it's great at that. It's better in the city, obviously, and you'll get 54 miles per gallon if you're careful on the throttle, but it's easy to see out of. I love the low belt line. I love sort of the expansive view that you get. It's easy to park, and it's pretty pleasant just for tooling around town. Mostly quiet, uh, but generally comfortable, easy to use. It's a fine car for just driving around every day. I will say that wind noise and road noise are a little bit of an issue. Maybe it's because the rest of the car is so quiet, like you don't really hear the engine that much. Um, but especially on the freeway, I mean, even with the aerodynamic shape, you'll hear the wind and you'll hear uh, the road underneath the tires. They're low rolling resistance tires, but they're still kind of noticeable. Is it fun to drive? Uh, not really. <laughs> I mean, the Prius's mission is not to be a fun to drive enthusiastic car. So steering feel, chassis, all that stuff, not exactly great. The car kind of rolls and wafts around. The steering feels a little disconnected, but it's fine. And in the city and just commuting, which is what this car is designed to do, it's still perfectly pleasant. And I guess, depending on your definition of fun, there is something to be said for trying to eke out the most fuel economy, switching between eco mode and, you know, trying to game the throttle and braking to make sure you're driving as efficiently as possible. A couple of small gripes are that the brakes are a little grabby. I know that there's some strong regenerative braking going on here, but it's a little tough, at least initially, to drive this car smoothly. The throttle, it's kind of dead immediately, and then the power just kind of hits right away. Not that there's a ton of power to be working with, but once you get the hang of it, you'll have a better driving experience, but for your first couple of times, don't be surprised if it seems a little jerky. How's the fuel economy? It's a Prius, so you know this thing is gonna be tremendously efficient. How does 54 miles per gallon city, 50 highway, and 52 MPG combined sound? How much is it? You'll need 24 grand to get yourself into a base Prius, but if you want one loaded up like this test car, add roughly 10 grand to that price. This top tier four touring tram costs $33,708 as tested. I imagine the sweet spot for the Prius is somewhere in the more affordable mid to upper $20,000 range. What are the negatives? Look, as a driving enthusiast, I'm kind of predisposed to not like the Prius because it's pretty dull from behind the wheel. But in terms of actual gripes, the styling doesn't really do it for me, though that's subjective. And inside, a lot of the materials just don't feel so great. Who should buy it? Honestly, all you really have to say is, this is the new Toyota Prius, and people will run to dealerships because Toyota has no problem selling these things like hotcakes. But it's easy to see why. It's functional, it's well-equipped, and it's outrageously fuel efficient. You might want to cross shop a Chevy Volt if you're interested in looking around, but if you only have eyes for the Prius, there's nothing wrong with this package. If you like this Why Buy video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or go ahead and read us at MotorOne.com.